While adventuring in Project Gorgon, it became immediately very clear that this game had a lot of depth and complexity. So we've gone ahead and put together a short list of tips that will make your life just a little bit easier in Project Gorgon. Like many other MMORPGs, when you're pulling enemies in Project Gorgon, you'll often find that they link or you get what we call adds. And one of the ways that you can avoid getting additional enemies is by doing the body pull. Now the body pull wasn't something that I was introduced to until EverQuest 2, but apparently this has been something that has been around since very early on with games like EverQuest. And it's a simple process of just running in and using your actual physical body to pull an enemy. In Project Gorgon, the enemies will notify other enemies in the area that they have been attacked. So if you run in and body pull without initiating combat with a physical ability, they will actually follow you to a safe location so that way you can kill that enemy one versus one without alerting the enemies around them. So I strongly suggest that when you're in heavily saturated areas that you be sure to body pull to a safe location to avoid death. While Project Gorgon does have a very simplistic chat system, I do recommend that you go ahead and take an opportunity when you first get started to set up your chat tab so that you have a singular tab that includes the majority of chats that you're going to want to actually pay attention to. So what you can do is you can create a new tab and then when enabling that new tab, you can name it whatever you like, and then you can turn on those channels that you wish to see regularly, and then you can access new channels by simply using a forward slash and then chat command to access those chats. I found this very helpful in the beginning of the game because there are quite a few chat tabs that are available, and sometimes chats from other chat tabs that you would like to see do not show up in those ones that you are using currently. One of the things you'll find very early on is that trade skills and Project Gorgon are essential for your day-to-day -day life. Because of this, you're going to want to hoard all of your raw materials. You wanna take advantage of as much storage space as you can to store everything. Everything can be used for everything essentially, so you'll want to make sure you hold on to it. And anything that you can't hold on to, mouse over and get more info on that item to see if anyone can take it for fame at least so it's not going to waste. I learned this very early on while playing and I found it to be super beneficial when it came time to actually start focusing on craft skills and made my life a whole lot easier. So continuing on with the topic of saving everything, that's gonna be very difficult when you first start the game. And as we had mentioned in the beginner's guide, you should go out there and do favor, favor, favor. Why is this important for hoarding everything? Well, when you talk to certain NPCs around the world and you open up enough favor, you're eventually going to open up storage space as well. Now there's plenty of storage to be had in Serbial and Serbial Hills for newer players, so I definitely encourage you to go and unlock those. There's anywhere from four to six different storage locations within Serbial itself, depending on how you divide the zone up in its dungeons as well as multiples in Serbial Hills, so there are plenty out there to service new players. So be sure to check out the storage section of the wiki to find more information on how to unlock those NPCs to gain storage to store those materials that you're going to need for the future. Now you're going to be traveling a lot in Project Gorgon, so I find one of the things that I didn't realize until quite a bit after starting the game is that having some sort of movement speed buff would be amazing. Now there is a page on the wiki that's dedicated to movement speed buffs, so feel free to check that out to determine what works best for you. But some of the skills that I recommend early on are unlocking the shield skill where you get a movement speed mechanic that starts at level 8. And you can also unlock potions via alchemy at a very low level as well. Now additionally there are items that can be found at the local vendor or via drops that do give you movement speed on your feet as well as Another accessible skill would be a mod to psychology that when you heal yourself, it gives you a movement speed buff. So be sure to check out that wiki to see what works best for you, but at the very least, be sure to check out the shield skill and the alchemy potions because those will make your life a hell of a lot easier. Now continuing on with getting around the world of Alharth and Project Gorgon, I wanna talk a little bit about teleports. 
Now, teleports are a means of getting around the world at a very quick and easy pace. However, they're a little bit less accessible early on in the game, and you have to be at specific teleport pads to get to them. So the tip here is to go out and level your teleportation. Sometimes guilds and other members of the community will run teleportation events to help you level up your skill by essentially giving you a portal to the telepad so that way you can then bind there to get the XP for teleportation. Once you've reached your mid 20s, you'll get the opportunity to recall alternate location and bind alternate location. And while they do use some more obscure resources, they do make it very easy to get around the world by having secondary bind points. You'll also get recall abilities that allow you to teleport to your most used location. And the gem in all of this is a teleportation machine that can be found later on in the game that will allow you to put in a set of coordinates essentially and teleport to various locations around the world. And that is really amazing for getting around the world as quickly as possible at higher levels when you have to move around from location to location almost constantly. So be sure to get out there and level up those teleportation skills and unlock those abilities as soon as possible. Now these next few tips are going to involve leveling of your certain skills, whether they be combat or trade skills. And one of the first things that I want to mention is to be sure to level up your first aid and armor patching. This is very important and often overlooked if you're using combat skills from different animal forms as you cannot use armor patching. Now the reason why you can't do this is because essentially you do not have hands. However, there are skill sets out there that allow you to substitute armor patching for a survivability feature that's very much like armor patching. The reason I mention this is because not only is it important to help with survivability in the sense of first aid and armor patching, but it's also very important because later on in the game you will learn skills that allow you to remove certain debuffs that you will get in higher level dungeons that are permanent, and if you don't have someone to remove them for you, you will need to remove them for yourself. Now this next tip was also mentioned in the beginner's guide to Project Gorgon, and that is you should focus on a skill set. It's easy to get lost in the world of combat skills with Project Gorgon because it's so immersive and it's so massive in terms of what you can do in the game that you can lose so much time by going back and forth between combat skills. So one of the combat skills I highly recommend checking out is animal handling because this is a skill that will allow you to utilize a pet and not use any of the actions to kill enemies around you so you can later on equip a skill set that needs to be leveled and you don't have to worry about coordinating abilities as you can simply focus on using the abilities of your new skill and your pet will do the work for you in keeping you alive and destroying your enemies. If animal handling is not your forte, you can always find other skills that you like that you can then drop down their skills to be 25 levels above your current secondary skill that you're leveling and use that skills primary abilities to add some survivability and of course by gearing up you'll also be able to utilize the gear that you've attained at higher levels to give you some additional survivability so be sure to focus on a certain set of skills that will allow you to level up your other skills a little bit quicker to make reaching that point of flexibility later on in the game a little bit easier for you now with trying to find that ideal skill set that you want to level when looking into mods to determine what's going to synergize with your particular playstyle, one of the resources that you're going to want to use is the Gorgon Explorer. Now the Gorgon Explorer is great because not only does it allow you to look at mods for specific sets or specific pieces or specific skills, it also allows you to build sets or build out skill sets if you will for when you're out there and you're leveling to determine what's going to work best for you. So that way you can determine what build you want to run. And what's great about this is that members of the community can also put together their own builds and share them with you for you then to try out in the builder itself. So be sure to check out the Gorgon Explorer over at gorgonexplorer.com. Now this last tip is probably one of the most helpful tips that I can offer. And it's something that once I found out this was a thing, not only was I impressed because I've never really seen anything like this in a game before, but it really changed how I was able to do research while I was playing. So if you ever have to look up anything in the game and you want to look up something on the wiki, all you have to do is type forward slash wiki followed by the command that you want to look up. Now the wiki is great because it has all kinds of different resources that you can utilize for different types of skills, doing research on NPCs, finding out what their favors are. I mean, there's a whole slew of information, almost anything you could, you could want. So even if you're not going to use that command right away, be sure to check out the wiki to find some more information. Of course, it's gonna be filled with more spoilers, 
but it really helped me find direction in the game so that way I could analytically put things together in a way that it made it palpable for me to process because I'm one of those people that likes to focus on a goal and attain that goal. And it's very difficult in a world where it's pretty much open and everything is open to you, especially when you don't have somebody there for guidance. So check out the wiki, use that wiki command. It is a huge lifesaver and it will change the way you play Project Gorgon. We hope that you guys found these tips helpful, if not at least a little bit useful, and that you guys are going to have a great time adventuring in the world that is Project Gorgon. We'll see you guys in the next video.